It is my pleasure to introduce you to the first um, lecturer for today. It is Julian Scott, PhD, certified acupuncturer. Uh, Julian Scott has studied physics at Cambridge University. And uh, after working in this industry, he pursued acupuncture studies at the International College of Oriental Medicine in England. That was from 1973 to 76. And then um, he studied at Nanjing College of Traditional Chinese Medicine. Today, this college is, of course, a university. Um, his interest is in optics, and uh, this is going to be his lecture today. It's going to be eye disease, eye pathology, and uh, acupuncture. Um, he has written uh, books. Um, another interest of his are the children. We had the pleasure of uh, hosting him um, a few months ago, and uh, we were very lucky to have him. Um, and uh, it seems that we're going to be lucky again because um, he's thinking of uh, uh, spending some time in, in Greece. And um, those, and, he, and another main interest of his is the is the children. Um, so the last uh, seminar he gave. Um, to us was about children. It was um, very successful. Uh, he gave us a very um, uh, good knowledge. And um, of course, uh, he has written books about um, both, about children and about eye diseases. So uh, welcome, uh, Julian Scott. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, yes, well, I, it's, I feel it's a great pleasure and honor to be <clears throat> invited to this, uh, to, to, to speak here. Um, the, the pleasure is slightly um, marred by the fact it's two hours time difference. And so here it's, it's eight o'clock on, on a Sunday morning, which is normally a time of repose for the, for the, for the great British people. However, um, I've had, had my cups of tea necessary ones to, to, get, to get to get the adrenaline going um, so I, I'll just give it, it just a very brief introduction um, to, to treating eye diseases I, I think um, the uh, uh, difficulty facing many people in eye diseases is oh help where, where do I start um, if you've got a pain in the ankle well it's obvious you, you treat the ankle or you treat the channels around it, or if you've got a pain in the stomach, uh, it's obvious you, you, you stick a needle in the stomach. That's the place you can start, at least. I mean, it's rather a crude way of putting things, but um, uh, with, with the eyes, what do you do? Where do you start? How, how do you go around things? Um, and I think this is a, a, a very big, big problem for, for many people. Um, now let me just get my screen sharing go. How does screen sharing work? Um, start screen about participants. Um, oh golly. How does screen sharing work? Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying, trying to get my, get, get um, um, uh, um, uh, uh, my screen up. Any, got any ideas? How to do this? A, uh, At the yes. down part of the screen, there is a share screen button. You yeah, have, okay. You have and to push that first, and then you have to open your PowerPoint. So you have to. You have to is, your... uh, host has disabled the participant screen sharing, so it's host problem. Can you? So, so um, can can can. Uh, can the host, who was ever the boss, uh, allow me to share my screen? So a technical problem. Um, well, I'll have to do it without screen sharing. Um, just, a, just a moment. Um, can you have a look at now? I think that uh, 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 Dr. Dimitriou should allow that. Ah, here we are. I've got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. That's fantastic. Um, now, where's the... Um, just, uh, da, 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 da. 
things to call me so many things to share. Um, just a moment, just a moment. Just, just, sorry about this brief delay. Here we are. There we are. That's it. There we are. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so, so the first thing to remember about the eyes is that they're living, they're parts of the body, and as a part of a body, it can change. Um, so the Western point of view, uh, sort of the unspoken Western point of view, is it's, it's, it, it's like a camera, um, and if something goes wrong with your camera, well, well you change it. You, if a lens has gone wrong, you take it out and put a new one in. If the cornea uh, has gone wrong, you take it off and put a new one on, have a corneal transplant. Um, and this, is, this has, does have success in certain things, certainly for advanced cataracts. Um, I think that, the, that, that this approach is best to, to replace, replace the lens. But in early stages of cataracts and, and many, many eye diseases, uh, things can change, things of which have got worse. Uh, many of these things can can get better again. Um, now, the, the, the three principles uh, to treating the eye. <clears throat> One is, first of all, bring chi to the eyes. W when things go wrong with the eyes, there's always something wrong with the chi in the eyes. It might be deficiency of chi, or, or it might be stagnation of chi. So, so that's the, the first thing to do. And of course, acupuncture is the number one therapy for bringing for bringing chi to a place. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about it later. Of course, there are other, are other techniques. There's massage and there's um, yeah, and, and healing, all sorts of ways. But acupuncture, in my opinion, is the, 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 the treatment of choice for bringing chi to the eyes. And secondly. You treat the underlying body condition. What is it? What is it in the body which allows uh, this thing to go wrong? Just so this is just like in any other uh, any other condition. If you've got a, a stomach ache, what is the underlying condition behind the stomach ache? Is it deficiency of chi? Is it stagnation of chi? What is it? Um, once you correct that, then already the things will start to move. And then the third factor, which it isn't really mentioned so much in the Chinese text, is learning to use the eyes properly. Um, I would say that always in, in eye conditions, um, that the, the patients don't use their eyes properly, that they either screw their eyes up or, or, or they stare or they fix their eyes. They don't rest their eyes. Just in the same way that um, uh, you can get uh, repetitive strain injury uh, in the fingers. It's if, if you get pain in the fingers, um, it's very often because you're not using your, your fingers properly. Um, so that's, um, that, that's all the basis of it. <clears throat> now, another thing I wanted to, to, to say is that what's extraordinary about Chinese medicine is right from the very start, right, going back to the Neijing, um, they uh, connected an organ with, with, a part of the, with a part of the eye. This is something which really, <clears throat> an idea which hasn't, really hasn't permeated it, it, it through to orthodox medicine. Um, the, the, the fact that different parts of the body, different systems in the body, can have, have an effect on the eyes. So, the, <clears throat> excuse me. So there's this very simple correspondence of, of the, the kidney relating to the pupil, because it's black, the liver re relating to the iris, because it's green or, well, green brown. It's a, so the, the, the character Qing uh, means, can mean brown in certain situations. The heart, because of its red, relates to the inner canthus. Um, that's slightly dubious, I have to say. Um, and uh, the spleen, because it's yellow and, and relates to flesh, relates to the eyelids. And the lung, because it's white, relates to the sclera. I mean, it's a, it's a very simple idea, um, but it's actually got profound uh, 
uh, profound consequences for treatment. Now, the, what's happened in the last, I should say, well, 100 years really, is, is a, a, a much deeper understanding of, of the eye and the different parts, of the different parts of the eye. And I think that this understanding is what opens the way for, for, for treatment. So I've got a, a picture, a sort of diagram of the eye with all the bits and pieces on it, uh, which is probably too small for you to read on your screen. But bear with me, I shall show you the, the little bits as we go along. So, so working from the back and, and the deepest one, we've got, we've got the retina. The retina is the, the, the is basically is anatomically an extension of the brain. Um, and uh, one, of the, one of the commonest diseases which you will come across is macular degeneration. That's to say, usually age-related macular degeneration. Um, and of course, age relates to the kidneys and the brain relates to the kidneys too. Um, and so it's got, it's got a lot of similarities with, uh, with, with dementia, with, with Alzheimer's disease, with a lot of similarities, which again is, um, uh, has primary, a primary cause of kidney deficiency. Now, it, we can again take a lesson from, um, from the treating uh, brain diseases, like, brain, like a stroke, for example. The, the best results with a stroke patient are to give treatment at least every day, possibly twice a day. Uh, then you can get quite phenomenal res results with it. The same with children with, um, uh, with uh, what do you call it, cerebral palsy. Um, if you give treatment every day or, or even twice a day, you get absolutely phenomenal results. And so we, we can apply the same thing to uh, macular degeneration, um, that giving intense treatment is much more effective than giving spaced out treatment. Um, I would say a brief comment about the treatment of macular degeneration. That there are many ways of doing it, many techniques. Uh, there's the, the bowl technique uh, developed by, by a, a, a Danish person. There is a technique developed by a man in India, uh, Dr. Chopra, who uses hand acupuncture uh, and so on. There are many different ways of doing it. There's the traditional Chinese way of doing it, which is what I do but they, all of them use very intense treatment. So, so that's, again, it's a sort of guise to what you, what you need to do there. Um, then going, on, going inwards, you've got the vitreous humor. This is a sort of uh, glass jelly substance which fills the majority of the eye. Um, and its nearest, uh, nearest body equivalent is flesh. It's a sort of, the, the, if you think of a sort of a flabby bits of flesh, as it were, um, and a, as the spleen uh, declines, so, so the condition of spleen and kidney weakness. So, so a, as with um, as with old age, all all the muscles, all the muscles on the leg and in, in the arm, they all they all tend to become come flabby, and so they shrink and become flabby, and, and that's. Uh, what happens, one of the conditions of the vitreous humour, it shrinks uh, and, and detach, detaches. And, and the best way to avoid that and the best way to, to support it is tonifying the spleen. And then uh, looking on to the lens, now the lens is very similar to cartilage. Um, <clears throat> Um, and so, like cartilage, it changes very, very slowly, um, and uh, it can, as as you know, it can um, uh, it can get go hard, and it can go yellow, and it can can uh, uh, it just become very sclerotic. Um, in the same way that the the, the cartilage of, of the joints can also, and it's very interesting that the same herbs. Um, 
you know, can are, are effective for for um, both uh, both joints and uh, and, uh, and, and the, the limbs. So the, the the Western herb involved in this is Ruta Ruta graviolens, which I believe the Greek name is Piganon. Um, but I stand to be corrected on that. Um, it might be of an interest to you, those who who, uh, who are interested in art, that the great Italian artist Titian or Tiziano um, used to wash his eyes in, in rue, ruta, every day in order to keep them healthy. Um, so that's the lens. Um, going further forward, the aqueous humor is what fills the front part of the lens, uh, the front part of the eye, the bits between the lens and, and the cornea at the front. Um, and it's a fluid. And just like all fluids, it's affected by the lungs and the spleen and the kidneys, those three organs. And one of the, the biggest problems that happens um, with the fluids is, is that the pressure becomes too high uh, and you give rise, first of all, to intraocular, high intraocular pressure, and then gl glaucoma. <clears throat> uh, and so um, you think of glaucoma as just being a kidney problem. No, it's, it's also a lung problem, also a spleen problem. So when you have a patient with glaucoma, look at those three organs there's always something that get going wrong with those one of those organs um and then uh, uh, going on the trabeculum the trabeculum is this um uh where are we it, it's the, this bit this bit here tra trabeculum and schlem's canal as it's called is the bit that uh, uh withdraws the fluid from that. So the, the fluid comes into the eye from the, from the choroid, which is the, out, uh, the rest of the inside of the eye, but it drains out through the trabeculum and Schlem's canal, uh, which would have two M's, I think, sorry. And as such, it's very similar to the lymphatic system, which drains uh, fluids away. And again, it responds to the same <clears throat> the same treatment and, and, and the same herbs um, to, to, so to give you an idea. Um, going back to the, the condition of glaucoma, I mentioned that it was a, a fluid imbalance. Uh, one of the um, common things that can happen um, is that the fluids in the eye become too thick. Uh, so just in the same way that the uh, that, that phlegm can, can, can affect the lungs uh, and phlegm can block the uh, lymphatic system. Um, so phlegm can block the, the uh, trabeculum and the Schlem's canal. And uh, as such, it can, can, can be a factor behind glaucoma. So where have we got to now? We, um, that's the, um, sorry, yes, that's, that's, that's there. Um, now the cornea, the cornea is a bit on the outside, um, and it's sort of halfway between nails, um, nails and skin, um, and as such, it it um, is affect, uh, affected by both um, the lungs or lungs and spleen and, and the liver. Now I've, I've said something blasphemous in terms of uh, of. Uh, of Chinese medicine by saying that the uh, the, the the nails or the lung, or the skin indeed belongs to both the lungs and the spleen, but of course it does. We all know that that eczema is strongly affected by diet, or all all, the, all skin problems are affected by diet, and as such, you can say that the lung the spleen also connects to the skin. Um, it's certainly true that the, the cornea um, is strongly connected to, to, the, to, to, to the digestion. Um, the, so there are two common conditions 
uh, of the cornea. One is keratoconus, where the cornea thins, and so, so it starts bulging slightly, and uh, the, the focus uh, go, goes very badly wrong. Um, and so that you can think of that as like thinning of the nails, the nails becoming weak. Um, and as such, you can treat the, both the, well, the lungs, the spleen, and the liver. Look and see which is the most important. The orthodox treatment is a corneal implant. And quite honestly, that's not necessarily, usually, if you can treat the patient with Chinese medicine. Um, and the same goes for corneal erosion, uh, which is a, it's, um, where, where you get a, a, a superficial thinning or superficial sensitivity of the skin, which is very, very similar to eczema and responds again to the same, same sort of treatment um, as, as, as eczema, change in diet um, and, and so on. Um, conjunctiva, that, that's the white bit which goes round. We, um, the Chinese relate it to the lungs uh, because um, it's white, but you can also look at it another way, that the lungs are uh, the, the only internal organ which are directly exposed to the air. And so the conjunctiva is also like directly exposed to the air. So it's continually exposed to all sorts of muck that's going around in the air. The, 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 the diesel particulates, the, the, the mold in England, I should say, the molds which are floating around in the air, the yeasts, the, the bacteria and so on. And so the conjunctiva is, is a, uh, has a, got a very powerful uh, wei qi. It depends on the wei qi for functioning well. And, and so recently, <coughs> excuse me, well, recently they've, they've realized this and, and they've started to notice that actually the conjunctiva has got a huge range of, of bacteria on it. Uh, and these are just in the same way that the lungs have got beneficial bacteria lining the inside of the lungs. So the conjunctiva have also got uh, lots of beneficial bacteria. And, and like the lungs, it's, uh, uh, ex, uh, it's affected strongly by wind, meaning wind both in its physical form, of course, but also in its um, uh, external pathogenic factor form. So that gives rise to conjunctivitis. Um, and it's also in the same way as the lungs, um, you can have it's affected by internal heat and liver yin deficiency. Um, the eyelids themselves, um, they, we say they're, they're, they relate to the earth because they're flesh really. And it really is true that they are very strongly affected um, by, the, uh, uh, by the spleen, I should say. So they can, you can see swelling in, in, in well, swelling in the lower lid uh, is, is usually uh, spleen dampness. Um, the different texts uh, say different things about which belongs to which. Um, some people say, say that the upper lid belongs to the spleen and the lower to the stomach. Some uh, so the upper lid says belongs to the stomach and the <laughs> lower lid belongs to the spleen. Um, so don't be too rigid about that. The truth is that some conditions is one way around and some conditions the other way around. So there's a condition where there's a stomach heat which causes the, usually the upper eyelid to, to, to sort of contract round and the, the, um, the, the hairs on the eyes um, it actually starts to, to irritate the eyes and, and, and dig in. Um, so that's the eyelids. Yeah, that, well, <clears throat> that's a sort of just a brief rundown to say, look, Western medicine has got a huge amount to offer here 
in, it's in, the, in our understanding of, of the eyes. We have this, in which the, the ancient Chinese didn't have all this, this wonderful equipment uh, to give us this understanding. Um, so anyway, that'll give you a, like a, a place to start uh, and a place, um, yeah, place to start. A few more, just a few more words before I, before I go on. Um, one is about bringing chi to the eyes. Now, the, the number one points are stomach one, of course, and, and cho ho, which is a point just like a, a halfway between uh, stomach one and the external canthus. Now, these, these points you can needle quite deeply and, and it gives the conditions where it's really beneficial to do this, particularly when the, the chi in the eyes is very, 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 very deficient. And you can actually needle both of these points to a depth of like one and a half, two tsun, I mean, really deeply without, without causing any problem at all. Lots of people are, are completely scared about doing this. Um, but I would like to say that if you've got any sensitivity at all, that there's really no danger in doing these points. The, the, the eyeball itself is incredibly tough with a, with a, a, tiny, little, um, a tiny little acupuncture needle. There's no way that you're actually going to to penetrate into the sky, into the eyes. You might scratch them slightly uh, if you're careless, but there's no like real danger. Well, what the main problem in treating the, the stomach one point, for example, or, or shoho, is that in patients where the, the chi is very stagnant, um, it can cause sudden and intense pain all the way through the eyes. And that can really terrify the patients. Um, the, the way to think of it is sometimes, I'm sure you've all had the experience that you treat pericardium six and there's like an electric sensation shoots up and down the arms in, in some patients. Um, well, well, it's like that in the eyes. It's a stagnation of chi. Then you treat these points and suddenly there's this violent pain shoots through the eyes. I mean, in fact, it's extremely good, just in the same way that, that the, releasing the, the, the tension in, on pericardium six can have profound effects, um, but it can terrify the patient. So, so you, if you're going to use those points, you, you, you have to warn the patient beforehand. I would also say that sometimes these points um, cause bruising. And you think, oh dear, I've caused a black eye. What's the problem? Um, in effect, uh, my experience has been that the bruising has been due to stagnation of, of, of blood, which is already there before you did the treatment. And quite often when, when you do a treatment and the, that's a lot of bruising and the black eye as a result of it, that, that that's a sort of definitive treatment when the big changes start to take place. Anyway, um, that's something which may, maybe one day I'll have the, the opportunity to, um, uh, to, to teach in, in, in clinical practice uh, for those of you who are interested. Um, if you, <coughs> excuse me once again, if you're a bit anxious about that, well, there's always the near points, bladder two, stomach two, Sanja 23, <clears throat> Sanja 17 um, here, um, which, whose name is Yi Feng. Yi Feng. Yi is often translated as, as a shade or, or screen, but it, it, it's, it means, it's a technical word actually in, in Chinese medicine, meaning um, a darkness of vision or, or a, a, a sort of shade over the eyes just in the same way that the, the American usage say, hey man, I got shades on, meaning, meaning dark glasses. So Sanjay 17 is, is actually quite a major point uh, for, for bringing tea to the eyes. Um, 
finally, just to just my, my sort of brief rundown, to uh, talk about the third thing, learning to use the eyes properly. And there's the technique called the Bates technique, um, which uh, th there's a lot of stuff you can find out about it um, on, on YouTube, if you, if you, for, for those of you who are interested. Well, well, that's it. It's, it's obviously in, in, in this short time, all I can do is say, give you like an overview, a, a taste uh, of, of what can be done. And, and uh, yeah, and to give, to give you courage to get to try, say, yeah, I'll give it a go. Just bring chi to the eyes, bladder too. It's not invasive. Treat the underlying condition. Treat what you see. Treat the patient um, as much as treating the symptom. So, so that's it for now for my prepared presentation. I, I don't know whether, whether Ioannis will allow me time for questions. Thank you, Julian. Thank you very much. Um, uh, yes, we can we can have one or two questions if there are any. Very interesting uh, presentation from my end. Um, I think many people will be scared to to use some of the local points. So. Um, I think when you are back in Greece, it will be a great experience to see you treat and to use these points. So I don't know if there are any questions. Okay. So it seems uh, we leave the questions for the time that you will be back to Greece, Julian. Okay. Right. Thank you very much for uh, joining us so early from the UK and for giving us uh, all this information. Very interesting. Uh, you're free to go if you need to go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I think that sounds quite a nice idea. It's another cup okay. of coffee at any rate. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. I think Thank there you. is a question. Oh, right. Um, okay. So someone is writing. Um, he, there is a question about if we use liver points for the iris. If the iris is clouded, this is from the from Evgenia Arigiti. Um, the answer basically is no. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, yes and no. Um, th there are two, well, there's only really one condition of the eye, which is uh, the iris, is iritis. And that's nearly always due to um, a, an autoimmune disease, which is spread from choroiditis. So to the extent that you use liver points for autoimmune diseases, yes, you can also use them uh, for the iris. But the iris is surprisingly rare that it goes wrong. Um, so it's, it's either due to an autoimmune disease or else an infection spreading from outside, spreading from um, uh, conjunctivitis or, or, or just a straightforward injury. So to, to the extent that the conjunctivitis can sometimes be due to liver yang rising, you know, bright red, red eyes because of this huge liver rat yang rising up, um, or li liver fire, I should say, to that extent, then yes, you can use uh, the liver points will be useful, but more commonly it'll be a, a maybe lung points or, as I say, the more complex treatment for for the autoimmune disease, which is uh, yeah, which is quite, quite a difficult disease to treat in my experience. So thank you for thank that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Julian. Yes. So we really thank you very much. Um...